Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to have you back. Let me tell you the story about how I failed in front of three and a half thousand people live on stage. It was the mid 2000s and the venue was a field in the middle of Berlin, where soon the O2 Arena, which is now called Mercedes-Benz Arena, was to be built. The suits from O2 had organized a concert to celebrate that, <laughs> and I quote here, that they now have a good standing in the city with this soon to be built arena. and. The main act was The Streets, a band that I really, really loved. My band The Dance Inc. was being tested out by the same booking agency as The Streets in Germany at the time. So they decided to throw us in front of the biggest gig we ever played, opening up for The Streets. We were beyond excited for that show, because this would be the biggest gig we ever played. We had been playing gigs before, mostly in small venues, clubs or squats, but never something of this size. So we rehearsed as much as we could packed all our stuff, which was a lot, in a van and drove over to Berlin. We were a three-piece band at the time. We had a singer who also played guitar, we had a drummer and then there was me and I played bass on the Juno 60 on top of a Rhodes, left hand, right hand. Fellow musicians from Audio Lead, the label we were with at the time, always laughed at the heaviness and size of my setup. But I really loved playing it and the sound, of course, of a Juno 60 and a Rhodes is gorgeous. So we set it all up and during soundcheck everything was fine. As we started playing to gray skies and about 12 to 13 degrees of Celsius, the venue filled up more and more. It was a free show. So in the end 3500 people were there to watch us bomb. It started out well enough. First song, second song, all were good and we were taking it in stride and starting to feel some energy coming back. Because not many people knew us at the time. There were maybe a hundred there in the audience who knew who we were. But then things started to drift and go wrong. The Juno 60 that I used as the bass in all the instruments went out of tune. And I was wondering, what's happening here? Is this the cold? No, it's not that cold. Also, this is a digitally controlled analog synthesizer. So it sh shouldn't go out of tune. <laughs> so these pretty nerdy thoughts came into my brain. I tried to fix it by retuning it live. And if you've ever played a Juno 60, you know that you tune it with a tiny little dial <laughs> on the back. I held down a chord with a sustain pedal on the roads and try to tune and playing another with here it was a crossover action but i was fighting a losing battle because it kept drifting and drifting i couldn't i couldn't get it to work and the singer started to look at me the drummer started to look at me and i was like ah. i struggled through the whole thing and everything Everything went out of tune, because if the bass is out of tune, then the guitar will sound out of tune, and especially the singer will sound out of tune, which was horrible. So I struggled for two or three songs more, and then I decided I'm gonna play the bass on the roads, which was a bit odd, but it kind of worked, and we finished, I think, like, to lukewarm applause. <laughs> and no bottles thrown at least. What could have been a triumph and a chance to grow our band faster than usual, yeah, turned out to be a bit of a disaster. And the booking agency booked one tour for us, which was kind of meh. We were playing another like opening act show and it was, it was pretty horrible. And then they didn't care for us anymore. And yeah, the band slowly petered out. Uh, we lost the drummer and the singer and me kept working on new stuff. We did a last album and then we said goodbye and parted our ways. Played together in two bands later, but that's another story. So what had caused the Juno 60 to go out of tune? During transport, the pitch wheel had gotten knocked loose a little and probably while playing that was enough to drop out the final screw. I heard it rattling when I packed it up later. I could tune all the way I liked. The pitch wheel was constantly shifting and twisting. On that day I swore I would never ever tour with vintage equipment again. But why am I telling you this? Well, I've broken that oath with my new show Schlaufenzeit.
in Schlaufenzeit, almost all the gear is way older than me. It's test equipment, it's tape loops, it's a 1950s vacuum tube synthesizer hiding inside an accordion. <laughs> Everything is set up for disaster, except it wasn't, because the show just premiered last weekend. I did differently this time is make sure that every single piece of gear was serviced properly by a professional. The test equipment and the electronium was fixed up by rerun electronics in Berlin and the space echo that I used came straight from sound gas as well as the mixer that I used. So everything was basically in peak condition and let me tell you, playing this show felt awesome because all this gear has such a beautiful sound and I could just be in the moment with it. Everything worked perfectly and for future shows everything will be checked again and I got doubles for almost all of the instruments should something fail. But still it's a huge risk to play with such vintage equipment. That is why in case something goes wrong I still have a Soma Pulsar 23 with me because I can replace many of the rhythmic and filtering functions that I'm using the test equipment with that. It won't sound the same and it won't have the same feeling that I get from the big vintage gear where everybody can see what I'm doing when I'm turning a filter. But as a backup, I can still run the show and improvise on it. Because, yeah, I'm an improviser and everything in my show has a setting and an idea, but then I just go through it while I'm in the moment. <laughs> so I can't rely on backing tracks or anything like that. And I'm happy to say that Schlaufenzeit will happen again. Next time we'll be at the Landesakademie Ochsenhausen on the 7th of January 2022. In the first week of February I'm heading to the Netherlands with the show. Those dates are to be confirmed. But yeah, if you're interested in booking this show, I'm available and it's a blast. You can get the full audio and the video of the show on my Patreon. And Patreon has honestly been the way I've been able to follow through with this whole madness. I could never ever have realized what I think now is one of my final forms as a musician without the people that support what I do there. So thank you. Now, I hope you enjoyed this more anecdotal style of video. Please let me know in the comments if this is something that interests you and I should keep on doing or if you'd rather have more 
gear focus stuff or whatever. <laughs> it's an experiment. So thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.